intermittent dieting for athletes. In this video, we're going to go over a review paper that looked at all the pros and cons of either continuously restricting calories or to do it intermittently when it comes to lowering athletes' body fat, maintaining their muscle mass, and we're also going to examine athletic performance. Hello everyone, my name is Mike Cola, and I've been a fitness trainer and gym owner for over 25 years. And if this is your first time here and you really want to improve your fitness, health, and nutrition along with me, hit that subscribe button along with the bell indicator so you never miss one of my videos. Okay, let's get right on topic. Let's talk about intermittent dieting when it comes to athletes. I guess the question is, what's the best way for an athlete to lower their body fat, to maintain their muscle mass, and actually have good athletic performance. Okay, traditionally what athletes would do and what the general population would do is just restrict calories when it comes to lowering your body fat. But unfortunately, when you restrict calories, there's a metabolic effect. That means your metabolism is actually going to slow down. So when you stop dieting, it's easy to put on weight. Also, when you restrict calories for extended periods of time, you have the potential to actually lose muscle mass and actually not have good athletic performance. So there was actually a review paper, a review paper that just came out that looked at this question. Are athletes better off continuously restricting calories or are they better off actually doing it intermittently? For example, taking diet breaks. Okay, now let's go over the six recommendations from this review paper. Okay, the first thing they want you to do is that when you're reducing calories on the times when you are restricting calories, don't overdo it. Don't try for rapid weight loss. They don't recommend a reduction beyond 35%. That would be the max. So for an example, if your maintenance calories are 3,000 calories a day, they wouldn't want you to go below, say, 2,000, okay? Or else it would be too dramatic. It'll slow your metabolism too much. It'll just be too much of a shock to the system. So only reduce your calories up to 35%. Okay. Now the second thing they recommend, which is obvious, is you want to keep your resistance training up. You want to resistance train. Okay. That's going to maintain your muscle mass. That's going to keep the metabolism up. So super important. You have to keep resistance training. Now the third recommendation to me, this is like the meat of the study. They say, okay, when you start doing this intermittent dieting, when you start cycling your calories, this is how they recommend you do it. Okay. For example, let's say 3000 calories are your maintenance calories. So you're going to reduce calories around 33% for two weeks, you're going to go down to 2,000 calories a day for two weeks. But then you're going to take this, in, you know, this intermittent calorie break, and then you're going to increase your calories, only the maintenance. You're not going to overeat. You're going to go right to maintenance for two weeks. Okay, so for example, you're going to eat 2,000 calories a day for two weeks. Then you're going to eat, eat 3,000 maintenance calories for two weeks. That's how you do this intermittent dieting. That's their recommendation. Okay, now their fourth recommendation, recommendation is you have to keep your protein calories up. They recommend generally about one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. So for an example, if you're 200 pounds and you're only 10% body fat, which is great, you, you have 180 pounds of lean muscle mass. So they want you to about 180 grams of protein a day. This is going to keep the muscle mass on. It's going to keep your metabolism up. Okay, now their fifth recommendation is on those two weeks when you were increasing your calories, that's when they think you should increase your training intensity or your training volume. And it actually makes sense. You know, there's more food in your system. Your glycogen stores are going to be more full. You'll be able to train harder. So try to time your harder or greater volume training on those two week periods when you're increasing your calories. Okay, now the sixth and final recommendation is when you are increasing your calories, they want it to be in mostly in the form of carbohydrates. Okay, your protein is also high. They don't want you to necessarily increase your fat intake. They want you to increase your carbohydrate. They say it makes it more anabolic. Like it helps protein synthesis to have more carbohydrates in your body on that, on that two week feeding period. Now, the authors of this review paper also wanted to point out that it's already been somewhat proven that if you're not an athlete, it does make more sense to take diet breaks if your goal is to lose weight and maintain your muscle mass and to prevent your metabolism from slowing down than actually just continually restrict calories. 
But when it comes to an athlete, we need more research. This is one of the first review papers that really looked at all the research to date. And they can't be positive about it, but they feel like it really has tremendous potential taking these diet breaks. You know, the athlete really does, like I said earlier, wants the best of both worlds. You know, they want to keep their body fat low, they want to maintain their muscle mass, and they want to have great athletic performance. But if you're always restricting calories, it's almost impossible when you're in a constantly in a calorie deficit to have optimal performance. So by taking these breaks from your diet, when you're cycling your calories, you can potentially have the best of both worlds. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. You remember, you know, if you like this video, you know, subscribe to my channel. I put videos like this out every single week. And also, I'd love you to leave a comment. If you're an athlete and you've been experimenting with either just restricting calories or maybe you've been trying to cycle your calories to improve your athletic performance, leave a comment. You know, I'm sure my listeners, you know, I personally would love to know, how, you know, is it working for you? Is it not working for you? Okay, well, take care, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.